The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. It's Jobs Friday. We get numbers for the month of June, uh, lower numbers than the market expected. But as our man Basil Chapman just said, I like it in the Tiger's Den. Uh, it's the market's response, and the market is negative so far. And quite the little pop, quite the pullback. We're below session lows pre market. Right now, you got the SPs off about 14 points, trading at 44.33. You got the NASDAQ 100 rolling over negative. By about 45 points as well. That's about a third of a percent, 15,190. You get the Dow right now off 108, 34,024. And you get the Russell off by three. We jump over to crude, trading a little bit lower right now to 71.28. We jump over to the gold contract. There's some volatility for you. Gold up to 1938, back to 1922. We jump over to notes and bonds. Look at this move, right? Up and down. We give it back all around, 110.10. Right now, we'll call it 110.11 to be exact on the 10 year. You're negative by eight ticks. You just traded up 20 ticks and gave it all back. These are five minute bars in the last 30 minutes. You talk about some volatility, man. We got 23 minutes to go until the start of trading, folks, but we got some action to say the least. You jump over to the dollar index, DXY. You spike to 102.63, and just like that, we're back to 103 right now in the dollar index. It's going to be interesting to see how the market takes this number as we interpret it. You popped initially on the fact that nothing like ADP, and you know, let's for a moment just discuss as we pull up the headline here, okay, from the journal. Jobs report shows hiring eased slightly in June. Interesting, when you pull it over into Bloomberg, U.S. jobs data solidify case for Fed rate hike in July, 209,000 jobs, so 209. That's the headline number added in June. Unemployment rate goes down to 3.6%. Wages up 0.4% month over month. 0.4% month over month. Those are the numbers that probably dictate that we'll get a July rate hike in terms of unemployment going down to 3.6%. Wages still running at 0.4% month over month. 209,000 jobs added. But when you factor in the revisions... The net number, excuse me, is actually under 100,000. ADP was at almost 500,000. Private payrolls, as part of this report, I think it was something like 165,000, something to that degree. When you add in that you have government payrolls, excuse me, private payrolls coming in at almost 500,000 yesterday, remarkable that this number comes in so low. So we'll see how we go from there, but I think the market taking that in combined with ADP yesterday, in combined with 3.6% unemployment. I mean, what would have happened if we got a 450 print, man? We got a 209 print, we got revisions where you're back under 100,000. This is the first miss in a long time though. So that's probably at least the spike we got initially up to 4455. But think about the expectations and what could have been almost, right? In terms of what could have been in terms of 209 is the headline number. ADP was almost 500,000. And still this market trades down about 12 points right now at 44.35. And we're right back to those pre-market session lows down about 11 points in the S&Ps. When you look at the numbers, uh, let me jump back to the journal for a second. You look at the numbers on a graph, man. We're not even back to the pandemic, pre-pandemic average, okay, which is just under 200,000. But hard to deny that the trend is lower. That's for sure. I mean, you back things up to the beginning of 2022, February, you're crushing almost a million jobs. You back it up to July, we had a spike of 568, but you're talking about a lower trend on those prices. Unemployment rate. That's the one that may be most perplexing. 3.6%. And maybe that's what the market's going to take and run with it, man. Initial applications for unemployment rose last week and are up about 20%. That's talking about everything, the totality. Uh, 
Yeah, we jump back to some of the live action in terms of the jobs numbers. We talked about job growth, 209. Yeah, and that's what I talked about. So you had a 60,000 increase in government jobs. So you were at about 150,000 on the private side versus ADP coming in at 500. Remarkable when you compare and contrast those two. Annual gain in hourly earnings, 4.4%. Yeah, and the drop in unemployment jobless rate had gone to 3.4 in April to 3.7 in May. All right, so we got the markets digesting these numbers this morning. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we're hitting it. You jump over to Apple shares this morning. Can't hold Apple down. Look at Apple holding up so well, man. You jump over to Google shares, Google. Microsoft down slightly. Check out the crew contract back down to 71.44. Gold contract trading right now at 19.24. All right, so we'll see how we trade at the 9.30 hour. Um, and from there we go. The two year Treasury yield eases slightly after a week of the expected payroll data. So the 10 year is just above four, and the two year is just under five now. You look at the yield curve, we're talking about a 10 year 4.07, the two year 4.98. And you got the three month at 5.38. Some remarkable yields when you talk about, especially on a shorter term basis. As the market claws back some of those gains, let's jump over to Meta. So, threads, I think last I saw, and remarkable yesterday, right? Up to 300. They finished the day at 290. You had, of course, negative action in the day, but come on, man. I mean, they're below where they were. on Wednesday, and you talk about 292. Nonetheless, let's jump over to talk about Meta for a second. I think I saw a tweet or something from Zuckerberg saying what they're gonna do is they're gonna get to a billion people first and then they're gonna think about monetizing it. So it'd be, be interesting to see how they try and get to a billion people. Yeah, this one has it at 30 million users. They gotta update that because I'm pretty sure I saw something there at 50 million. I myself keep getting notifications of people that I follow, they're following me, something like that. Very simple to sign up from Instagram. And uh, yeah, Mr. Musk has some competition, man. And the remarkable thing about Twitter that I said yesterday is it's really not that special. You just gotta be you know, the biggest one out there. You gotta be the location everybody comes to to put out their message to some degree, which Twitter was for sure. And now they get some competition. And, and uh, yeah, it would make sense that that's gonna continue. Okay. Let's check out what else I got pulled up here. We talked about the two-year. We talked about jobs. Yeah, 209 is the number in June. And as I'm talking about, the trend is lower prices for sure in that. All right, folks, we got the S&Ps down by eight points. We get the NASDAQ off by 12. We got the Dow off by 67. Come on back. We got a few things to talk about. We'll talk a little bit about Jack Ma. Uh, $1 billion, basically, what they're going to be paying as they are finally done with Jack Ma, it looks like, in China. Stay tuned, folks. It's Jobs Friday. Markets down by 10. 209,000 jobs added in June. We got a lot to talk about. Friday trading. We'll be back in three minutes. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P down by 11 points right now, trading at 44.35. NASDAQ 100 clawing it back, right? Only negative by about a tenth of percent. You get the Dow right now off by 100. That's about three tenths percent. The Russell putting up a green quote right there as you're barely in the positive in the Russell. Let's see how some of the, those banks are trading right now. JP Morgan in the positive. Yeah, pushing 144. Maybe they like the fact that they'll be getting uh, some higher interest potentially. Salesforce. Yeah, interesting. The bank's doing pretty well right now. Wells Fargo, City. It's a pretty choppy market. We're going to see where we open. We're only negative by 10 points, but we had some volatility yesterday. The market was down by almost 60 at one point. You jump to Alibaba. There's a spike for you, up from 83, up to almost 87. The market likes when you take out risk, even if you end up paying $1 billion to do it. So China ends the probe of Jack Ma backed Ant with uh, about a billion US dollar fine, 984 million, 7.12 billion won on Ant Group, okay? Uh, the People's Bank of China fined the company for violations in payment, settlement, anti-money laundering, and fund sales businesses. And yeah, they were so close. Remember this going on, man? They were so close, and then Jack Ma opened his mouth uh, over there a little too much and they clamped it all down. And that was kind of the beginning of the end. Maybe that was an epiphany for the leadership over there that, hey, we got to get control of everybody yet again. But the market likes that that risk is taken out. All right, let's talk a little bit of virtual reality, augmented reality. So interesting the way Apple's planning this launch of their $3,500 Vision Pro. Appointment only is the deal. The slow rollout, appointment only, $3,500. Uh, some people struggle to continuously wear the device. That's one thing that's really interesting about this, right? In terms of the weight of a product like this, you see that this is so early generation of everything. The real holy grail here is going to be something that you can put on your head or put on glasses. And it's a seamless integration to your head because, boy, your neck, man, your neck cannot handle pounds extra pounds on your head. I mean, I'm sure it could. I'm sure if you trained it, I'm sure if you trained your neck muscles, right, you could do it. 
but it's not comfortable to have a lot of weight on your head when your neck is supporting that for extended periods of time, etc. So they're going to sell that through its U.S. web store in early 2024 before expanding online and elsewhere. It's going to offer the headset in other countries at the end of 2024. It's going to be sold at all of Apple's locations. The company's planning for sections initially at the stores in major cities. So they're going to have huge sections in the big cities, of course, as a showcase. Um, yeah, appointments and in-store promotion in select U.S. markets early next year is when they're coming. This is probably going to be like the phone in that the phone came. It was somewhat revolutionary, but every generation early on really changed what it could do, the capabilities, the camera, um, the functionality of that phone, the screen images, the screen size, et cetera. There were real changes that dramatically improved that product versus now I mean, this camera's so good, man, I'm never going to know the difference. But maybe what will start happening is maybe phones will start recording in virtual reality or 3D or, or 8K, 3D, 360-degree or something like that because phones really don't get better right now because everything is so good, right? Video camera, phone, the clarity, all that stuff versus something like this. Early on for $3,500, you're getting a product that they're pushing out. And even from when they launched it, okay, they talked about from when they launched it, as in their party that they just had when they showcased it to when it actually gets shipped out, they're still improving it during that time. Excuse me. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. But boy, they talk about even, you know, selling a million units. If you just sell a million units and Apple might be able to sell a million of anything, especially if it's on the forefront of their product line, you sell a million units, that's $3.5 billion in revenue. And they'll probably still lose money on that, of course. But it's still almost $4 billion in revenue, only selling a million units. And yeah, Apple, they can probably sell it. All right, what else do we got pulled up here? We talked about Meta. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk a little oil as well, China. Yeah, let's talk a little bit of EV sales. All right, let's pull up Tesla before we do this. So we get the market down about 10 right now. You jump over to Tesla. Tesla shares actually in the positive by about a buck fifty. And you have Ford coming out, I believe, right? Hyundai overtakes GM. I think I got a Ford story up here as well. Do I? All right. Hyundai overtakes GM, but it's interesting to see the numbers when compared with Tesla, man. And let's just get right to the numbers. Hyundai Kia, 38,000 units. That sold from January to June this year, and this is their numbers last year. Interesting when you look, right? Tesla, obviously, leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else. How about GM just crushing it from nothing? And how about Hyundai barely up in the game? They sold 35,000 units in 2022, and they're selling 38,000 units in 2023. Uh, Ford barely rising as well, and Volkswagen, they got big plans in the EV sector from 12 to 26. But yeah, Tesla still crushing it, man, well above everybody else. It's going to be interesting to see what this chart looks like in the next three to five years, right, as everybody starts going mainstream with EVs. And, yeah, not bad growing 30% for Tesla when you think about it. They even beat Hyundai and they beat Ford's growth in the EV sector last year on a much bigger number. All right, we jump over to Levi's. They slashed the guidance on weak wholesale revenue. They expect earnings per share slightly below what they were looking at, a buck ten to a buck twenty. They were looking for a buck thirty to a buck forty. Steep drop in U.S. wholesale revenue. They slashed the profit outlook. And there, they're talking about their last earnings, but that's really the number in terms of them looking for less. And you jump over to Levi's. Yeah, that's a drop, man. They're off a whole dollar. Stock's only a fourteen twenty stock. You're down basically almost ten percent on this equity. They come out with their numbers last night. And you're lower to start the morning. It's going to be interesting open, man. This market chopping around. Initially, the market probably should have loved this number in terms of slowing down the economy, right? 209,000, much less than the ADP private number of almost 500,000. But I think it's a little skittish on the fact that, number one, we got unemployment at 3.6%, okay? And we have wages rising month over month, month over month, folks, okay? 0.4%. Pretty amazing when you're dealing with those types of numbers month over month when you're talking about May to June still in that 30-day period, right? 
wages increasing at almost a 4.8% annual clip. That's got to get down to 2 to 3%. Wages are part of the equation. They may not be the number one part of the equation, but boy, they sure are. And unemployment at 3.6%, and that number, um, the market just trying to figure out what way we're going to go. But we're going to find out in about four minutes, folks, as we're chopping around at 43.38. Remember, lows yesterday at about 44.20. We got down to this morning at about 44.31. We jump over to the VIX this morning. Volatility index yesterday, we got a 17 handle, man, before the market saved itself end of the day. 15.55 right now on the VIX. Now, what's to keep in mind is that automatically you're going to get a drop in volatility premium anytime you get that type of, of an event, an unknown event, right? That volatility that was tied to the unknown event taking place at 8.30 in the morning disappears when that event becomes known. Well, I was still sitting at 15.50, man. We got the open in about three minutes right now. You got the NASDAQ squeaking into positive territory. How about it, man? Apple is flat this morning. Microsoft, so far, barely in the negative. We jump over to Tesla shares. They're up $2, as I mentioned. Meta shares right now up by a dollar. NVIDIA shares right now up by about a dollar. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. See you in three minutes. Don't go away. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den and Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&Ps, right? Pretty much at session lows right now, off about 12 points. NASDAQ 100 back in the red by about 16 points. You get the Dow off 150. That's about half a percent in the red. Look at the Dow coming right into the lows of yesterday. Actually just dipped below that price point. Russell hanging on to positive gains right now, up by about three. See how some of the yields are doing right now. We jump over to the two-year first. You got the two-year, quite the spike, quite the pullback. And from there, you got higher price and a little bit of lower yield. You jump over to the 10-year right now, the 10-year, the spike, the pullback, and we're up about eight ticks from that low of 110.10. Right now, you get the 10-year negative by about one tick. And let's just jump over and see what we're dealing with right now. You got a 10-year of about 4.06 right now. Taking a look at that yield curve for a moment. See the two-year. 4.95 look at the two-year dropping about six basis points right and you get the 10-year actually rising by about two basis points interesting see how the dollar index is trading on our open yeah down to about 102.78 right now so what do we got we got a little bit of that's gonna say lower yield and we do to a certain degree. You get the 10 year actually flat right now at 110.20. We were down at 110.10. So we have a little bit of lower yield. You have a little bit of weaker dollar. And we have the SPs down about eight points right now, two minutes into the trading day. All right. What else do we have going on today, folks? It is the last day of our July 4th Tiger Dollar sale. Uh, as it says, last chance ends today, up to a 40% bonus on your purchase. If you've never used Tiger Dollars before, folks, please check it out on the front page of TFNM. You can get a 20, a 30, or a 40% bonus on your purchase. If you subscribe to any newsletter already, you get your Tiger Dollars, you apply them to your account. They're used automatically going forward on every transaction, whether it's monthly, six-month, yearly subscriptions. Uh, if you enjoy attending any of our live trading workshops, I think Larry's trying to plan one next month already. Those Tiger Dollars can be used for. You can get, as I mentioned, either a 20% bonus for the $500 option, a 30% bonus for the 1,000, and 40% for the 1,500. This sale ends Friday, July 7th, which is today. Pretty remarkable how time is flying. We always say it, man, but man, July 7th, it's hot and it's sticky in Florida, man. I don't, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. It's hot and sticky, I'm sure, in a lot of places right now across the country as it's been so hot. But I find myself already saying, man, I can't believe it. We're going to be in the middle of July before I know it. The summer runs through August. So we're, you know, less than two months away from September. Now, in Florida, you really got to wait until October. And you really got to wait till like the end of October to start getting some decent weather, some cool weather that you can actually enjoy, especially during the daytime. But man, we're already through May, June. And we're coming up to the middle of July, which is some heat in Florida. But time is flying. Uh, but again, check this out, folks. We only do two sales a year for Tiger Dollars. They're a great way to add savings to anything we offer, whether you're talking about, you know, if you're an opening call subscriber, you're thinking about trying out Basil's newsletter. You're thinking about Steve Rhodes' Mastering Probability. You want to sign up for Rocket Equities and Options. You want to sign up for the Gold Report. Okay, you want to sign up for Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report, any of those. Check out Tiger Dollars. We only do a couple sales a year. Uh, get your bonus and get in before that action ends today. Uh, July 4th, Tiger Dollar Sale. And yeah, so let's jump back. What are we going to talk about? Let's talk a little bit of Taiwan. So this one's interesting from a big, big picture perspective. Taiwan has a big national security risk. It imports 97% of its energy. Boy, if things do go bad with China, so there's a lot of ways that war can go bad without weapons being fired as this illustrates because you clamp off taiwan man um yeah how are they going to survive if that really if if tensions really come to rise so what they talk about in this article it's a journal article out this morning okay and they import 97 percent of their energy they make all the chips so things could get really heated man really quickly if china tries to clamp down taiwan and you can't get any of the energy that they need to produce what they do in terms of uh how do they put it here their energy intensive technology industry um they rely on sea shipments for 97 percent of its energy so last year when pelosi visited taiwan you had beijing basically effectively courting 
cordoned off Taiwan and conducted four days of live fire exercises. It was a preview of the tactics China would likely employ in a future conflict around the island, and it raised questions about Taiwan's energy supplies and the unique vulnerabilities of an island lacking indigenous resources and relying on sea shipments for 97% of its energy. You're talking about coal is 42%, they bring it in by sea, and LNG, 39%, they bring it in by sea. That's that's about all you need to know, folks, in terms of the risks that are present if things really escalate. Because I saw that this morning. I said, there you go, right? There's how things could potentially escalate pretty quickly without, you know, tank battles and in-air fighter jet battles. Now, what happens when this really comes to a head and there are potential battles on the sea or how that plays out? Uh, but there's no way they could become energy independent, but they're talking about potentially diversifying some of that. While total energy self-sufficiency is out of reach for an island like that with no resources, analysts say mitigating some vulnerabilities in the case of a potential quarantine blockade or invasion could help by time. Uh, domestic renewable energy power generation to lessen. Yeah, who shouldn't do that, right? In a crisis, Taiwan would likely need roughly one quarter of its energy it currently consumes to keep the bare minimum of its critical infrastructure and services running. So they got to be at like 25% to survive in a worst case scenario. And anyway, then they're not going to reach that level. So keep that a risk perspective, man, because I saw that. I mean, that's that's a risk perspective when you put it lightly. All right. What else do we have up here? Yeah, the Alzheimer's drug. We're going to um, FDA approves the Alzheimer's drug. Lakembi, is that how you say it? Paving a way for broader Medicare coverage. It's going to broadly cover it. And of course, that's a crucial step for it getting approved and making any money on that drug. And it slowed con cognitive decline in a clinical trial, but the treatment's expensive and carries serious risks of brain swelling and breeding. Alzheimer's is a tough one, man. You want to have some hope. You want to have a possibility for people to try and do something. Uh, and Biogen, man, you get a spike and actually you get a spike lower on the open. You're off by 1.5% on that. Check out this stock. You talk about some volatility, right? Living and dying on the path of their drugs as it goes to the stratosphere and back. Now, what drug was that? Is that a different drug or was that the same drug? In terms of, I remember that one getting approved to 468, but then what happened? It was controversial. Then it wasn't going to get covered by Medicare. Then basically no one was going to be able to use it. So you dive down to 187 and uh, yeah, and then you get a spike on some more fundamental news to 279. All right, we got markets barely in the red, but you got the Russell up by 15, man. Check that out, right? What do we got? Yeah, banks are positive, man. JP Morgan's up by a percentage right now. Wells Fargo is flat. City's up by seven tenths right now. Goldman's up by two cents right now. Morgan Stanley's up by two cents right now. Two tenths percent. Bank of America's up by a per percent right now. Banks trading higher. S&P's off by five. Market digesting the jobs number. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. The market chopping around a bit. We get the S&Ps off by 8, NASDAQ 100, barely in the red by 22. Interesting at the Russell charging higher, up by 11. Banks in positive territory. You get the Dow right now. Almost at session lows of yesterday, we just got a 33,000 handle. We're trading right now at 34,014. Let's check out yields. Digesting the jobs number this morning. We're, excuse me, getting a little bit of higher price and lower yield as the 10-year continuing to rise to 110.21 right now. You jump over to the dollar index, that's bringing a a weaker dollar back into focus, 102.73. Uh, we check out the gold contract right now. You got a weaker dollar. That's putting a bid under gold. Gold trading at 19.30 right now. We jump over to crude. Similar action in crude as you got crude back to a $72 price point right now for crude. All right, jumping back to some of those numbers in the jobs report. The headline number again, 209,000 added in the month of June. Now we got some revisions here. Okay, so you got May's downward revision to 306. Yes, and the slowest month of job creation since December of 2020. Now, average hourly earnings, right? Check this out. You're plateauing here at year-over-year -year percentage change in average hourly earnings at 4.4%. That's the number we've been at since January, folks. We got the unemployment rate at 3.6%, and we have wages rising 4.4% continually for the last six months. Now, yeah, you got to 4.7, 4.3, 4.4, 4.3, 4, 4, 4 is the number we're at. Uh, that's all employees on private non-farm payrolls since January of 2022. Government was 60,000 in there. Other industries that shows gain, showed gains, healthcare was at 41,000 added, social assistance 24,000, construction 23, leisure and hospitality, they only put it at 21,000 for the month of June, sector has cooled off considerably, again, so different than ADP, right? The retail sector lost 11,000 jobs in June, while transportation and warehousing declined 7,000, yeah, 497,000 for ADP in the month of June. You have a variety of analysts interpreting this data. 209 can hardly be described as weak. I would kind of agree, man. We got 3.6% unemployment. We got wages continuing to grow at 
Um, yeah, and you break down the participation rate, okay? The labor force participa participation rate held steady at 62.6% for the fourth consecutive month, but it's still below its pre-COVID pandemic level. I mean, a lot of this, folks, people went into retirement. I mean, we're talking about, we are now three and a half years past that price point. For a lot of people near retirement, maybe they had money in the market, maybe they just had money in real estate, maybe they just had money in their home that doubled, okay? And now they have equity that they feel comfortable not going back to a rat race style work labor force, whatever it is, especially if they're near retirement to that level. But you get into the prime age participation rate, that's just between 25 and 54. 83.5%, the highest in 21 years. So it's interesting when you compare those two, right? There has been quite a wealth appreciation when you look at either the stock market or housing or both combined over the last three and a half years. Really remarkable, man. So May was revised down 33,000, okay? And April was revised down 77. You add them up, that's 110,000 negative revisions you take that off the 209 that we got for the headline number in June, and you have a net number of 99,000 added. So that's all the numbers that you're gonna hear out there. You're gonna hear 209 is the headline. You're gonna hear the net add is 99, okay? Unemployment at 3.6%, wages growing 0.4% month over month and 4.4% annualized. Uh, but we're still at 209. Don't get too focused on the net number of 99 because the economy's still growing, man. We're at 210,000 jobs. ADP saying we're at 500. And even the BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is where the non-farm payroll numbers come from, even they say, right, unemployment's at 3.6%. And I don't know if that calms down inflation, folks. I think it's very optimistic. Let's put it that way. I think it's very optimistic that that calms down inflation. Well, look at this. The market's popping, 44, 44, that's basically where we were coming in at the pre-market session highs before we got that non-farm payroll number. You have a high of 44, 54 up there. We get the markets rising a bit, and we got the NASDAQ in positive territory. Let's check out some of those magnificent seven stocks. Apple shares popping a bit, but still in negative territory. Microsoft shares down about two-tenths. Tesla catches a bit up 1.1% right now. <coughs> Excuse me. MetaShares is still in negative territory. Man, what, what would they have done without the success of Threads? Think about that. They start a social media app that gets 50 million people to sign up in 48 hours, and the stock is pretty much ho-hum. Now, context is everything, okay? Stock hasn't been ho-hum since November. Talk about channels, man. Whew, look at this thing, right? It started at 88, even if you cherry-pick the start of the year. I mean, that is a pretty well-defined channel, man. We're watching the S&P almost rolling over. Look at that thing. Hey, you can make the case that we're at the bottom of that channel line, right? We'll see. Maybe that's the test, man. Let's extend that line to the right. Let's put it even in a hourly chart. As you can see, a little linear regression. We get out of that line, we get back in that line. We're trading right now at 290.60. But yeah, pretty well defined, man, when you put that thing on a daily basis, meta through the roof. So remember all the optimism, folks. Remember all the optimism of AI. Remember all the optimism that this has been talked about, that they were coming for threads, um, coming for Twitter for some time. You just traded from 120 up to $300. You just traded it from 88 up to $300. And you're talking about an all-time high on meta of only 384. Remember the optimism in the middle of that time. Okay, Meta, Meta is not Apple, folks, okay? Meta, they're their own beast for sure, but the way that they rely on advertising revenue, which could easily be cyclical if things really turn, we haven't seen it happen yet. And boy, they control Facebook, they control Instagram, they control WhatsApp, and now they're gonna control threads, okay? And that's not going away anytime soon. And what do you, no matter what you think about Facebook and Zuckerberg, Facebook might be, a dying breed. You could make that argument a lot more reasonably than you could say that Instagram is a dying breed or that WhatsApp is a dying breed. And there's a reason why they tied threads to Instagram and there's, they, they didn't tie it to Facebook, right? So 
they're going nowhere, man. But you are right near those highs. And I would argue that there was a lot more optimism when we were sitting there in September of 2021 at 384 in terms of what this equity could do, uh, the future of their advertising, right, the future of their profitability versus right now when the Fed is still in a hiking cycle, it looks like, when they meet in two and a half weeks almost. So optimism uh, already built into this equity. But guess what, man? You can't hold a good market down. We got the S&Ps. Positive territory, 4448. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. Markets in the green. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You take a look at this market just back from the acceleration we had a couple of weeks ago. Because you put this thing back, you put it on a, a daily. You see that was kind of a, a pivot low that we had when you had the spy trading back to about three four thirty one. Excuse me, you trade up to four forty four. I'm just going to put this back on a hourly chart. Uh, made it almost to that six one eight, right? Chopped around the fifty percent yesterday. This morning. We're basically flat right now at 44, 47, NASDAQ 100 in the positive by 25. You get the Dow in negative territory by 44, and the Russell leading the way up almost a full percent right now. We jump around to notes and bonds. Yeah, I would pay attention to notes and bonds, man, because the market is trading with them right now in terms of if we are getting lower yield in a weaker dollar, the market is trading higher. If they're going to interpret this as higher yield, 
which is going to bring a stronger dollar that would bring a weaker market. We saw the acceleration. We saw the give back. Pretty remarkable, folks. We just got 20 points, 20 basis points up in the 10-year, 20 basis points down, and now we're talking about half a point again to the upside. You talk about volatility, man. We jump over to the dollar index right now. DXY, dollar index trading at 102.68. We're all the way back to those lows. Even though you have a yield, it's not quite at that price level. You get a weaker dollar market is liking a weaker dollar uh, this morning. And don't forget about, folks, this is the last day. What am I getting? Ah, I'm getting an Amber Alert on my watch. Excuse me. Uh, on my iWatch. It's beeping at me. Uh, folks, this is the last day for Tiger Dollars. 20, 30, or 40% bonus. The sale speaks for itself, man. Check it out. Uh, we do these a couple times a year. If you're thinking about signing up for anything, folks, they were asking about Larry in the Den. Uh, Larry's just talking about it. But he's going to be doing a show, and uh, yes, he's already talking about doing potentially another live trading session in August. So we always look forward to that. You can use those Tiger Dollars for anything we do. They never expire, folks. They can, they're transferable. You want to gift them to a friend. Uh, whatever you want to do, check it out on the front page. Today's the last day. Thanks so much for starting your trading day off with me. It is Jobs Friday. We got markets. Positive territory. 209,000 jobs added in the month of June. Uh, have a great Friday, folks. Have a great weekend. Stay tuned for our man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next with the Tiger Technician's Hour. I'll see you back here Monday morning. Have a great one, folks.